Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and as we all know, we are waiting for Godot 4.0. Insert your joke here; they're always out there. Uh, but there's been some exciting stuff that has been announced recently about the development of Godot 4, and that's what we're going to focus on in this video. Now, I do have to remind you, Godot is very much a work in progress. Godot 4.0, that is. This stuff is going to be very far down the road. Although a couple of these things are actually being backported to Godot 3.22 potentially, so. There's some stuff here that could be of immediate interest in the future. So what we're going to do is jump in and look at some of the features that have been developed for Godot 4.0 that have been recently announced. And a couple of these are actually game changing type features. Now what you're seeing here is the nightly build of Godot 4.0. And I got to promise you, this ain't stable at all. This is not for development, not even close. It actually has quite a few problems such as every time I create a node in the scene, it creates two versions of the node. Uh, it locks up sometimes. I'm having some trouble with uh, processing and lists and such. So this is developmental. So I have to warn you of that up front. But I'm going to showcase you a couple of the new features. I'm going to start with one of the smallest ones, and then I'm going to move on to probably what is one of the biggest ones. And the smallest ones is the new sky shader. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to search for my environment, which is somewhere in this mix of stuff. Uh, let me just filter env. All right, so there's my default environment. So now when you come into your environment, if you go under sky, you will find now under sky, you can now create a new sky. And inside of that, you can actually now create new shader types. So there is um, physical sky material, procedural sky material, panoramic sky material. So the sky is a new class name. And on top of that, there is a completely new shader type of type sky. So right now you have um, spatial, you have uh, light, you have various different kinds of shaders built in. Well, there now is a new one called sky shaders. We'll get into a little bit more of the details of that in a little bit. But all the stuff has been kind of moved into one spot. There's that new shader type. So uh, dynamic and programmable sky environments should become much more capable in Godot 4.0. But realistically, that ain't the big news we're here to talk about. But while I'm over here in the inspector, I can showcase to you what that big news is. So first, I'm going to come out of here and I'm going to minimize this window. So we're going to scroll this down a little bit like so. And you'll notice here in inspector, if I come over here right now, I can now click this guy and say make floating. And now we have an OS window. We can actually have this docking inside as well, but we can use your native language or native um, operating system platforms. And what this allows you to do is just de-dock windows. So now I could go ahead and use, you know, standard windows docking for dock left and over here dock like so, um, for some reason, Godot doesn't dock well for the one direction. You're seeing some rendering issues here, but as I select things in the inspector, my free floating window over here is now um, free floating. And so what this is really nice for is we'll be able to have multi desktop setup. Now I haven't found a way to actually uh, float this window, for example, it seems to just be dialogue. So any of this stuff, uh, we can now float them. So you can bring them out and then drag them around, you can resize them and so on. So now you can have your window or customization just about however want, however you want. So this guy you can maximize out and then you take any of these guys, drag them off into other environments and you are good to go. Now let me just de-maximize. You want to bring this guy back down, simply go to one of these guys and close it out. There you see, and then it goes back and the specter, boom, there you see, and it goes back. So that is going to be a game changer. This is going to make it so working in multi-monitor environments is definitely going to be nicer. There's also another option over here that I think is new. We have a toggle system console there as well. I don't know if that is new or not. Unfortunately, it doesn't hide it. It just toggles the visibility of it. One of those things I find really annoying about Godot default build is that there's always that console window in the background. And no, that doesn't hide it from you, but it does uh, toggle the visibility as you just saw there. But the big thing here, of course, is this new support for docking and floating dialogues. So anything that is a dialogue here, it can be docked out or made to be floating. So you can configure your environment, anything other than the viewport window can be done this way. Uh, unfortunately, not necessarily true down here. So these windows, the, the centralist stuff cannot be floated right now. But all of your standard uh, panels to the side, anything that could be docked previously this way can now be made a floating window. So if you are using multiple monitors, Godot 4 is going to make your life a whole lot nicer. Now on top of that, uh, this new functionality is also going to impact some of the programmability stuff of the Godot engine. And now let's get over to the announcements. So here we're going to head on over to um, 
the Godot engine blog. So this is under uh, the news section. This is an article on Godot. We've got a couple to take a, to take a look at. The first one here is core refactoring. That's kind of what we just showed today. So they moved out the OS and display server. So the, the stuff is not a bloated kind of giant class. Uh, at the top, the display, the display server allows managing multiple windows um, and they've kind of refactored how they things work. Uh, so the root node in Godot, get tree, get root, uh, which used to be a type viewport, now can be changed to a uh, can be now be changed to be of window type. Um, so we have multiple window supports in the editor, as we just saw. There's also embedded mode. So if you're working blah, 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 uh, new features is that the viewport class can now be instructed to embed all child window nodes and provide internal windows for them. So it will emulate a window manager within it, including decorations, resizing, title bars, close buttons, and so on. This can be done manually by togging the embed sub windows property. And then you see, we also have the OS style we just saw. There's also a bunch of renames coming. As someone who makes tutorials, I can't stand renaming. So I hope they do this because this just breaks all the existing code that is out there and so on, but they're trying to rename things so that there is a more consistent names. So instead of having like area and then area 2D, now they're gonna have area 3D um, and then area 2D respectively. It does make more sense, but it is a little bit annoying. Also spatial is being renamed to node 3D and that is going to break a ton of tutorials. So and we've also got a couple of the servers being named. Visual server is being renamed to rendering server. Navigation server and physics server are be being renamed to navigation server 3D and physics server 3D. So that way you have a consistent naming between the 2D sides and the 3D sides. And then of course, physics 2D server and navigation 2D server are just going to be renamed so that the 2D and 3D are, or sorry, the 2D part is at the end, just again, for a more consistent naming convention. This all I agree with. Uh, spatial being renamed to node 3D makes more sense. Uh, but again, these renames right here, they're going to break a ton of existing tutorials tutorials, a ton of existing code. I get why they're doing it. It's just really frustrating, especially from the perspective of a writer. <laughs> but uh, hopefully they're done with renaming, rebranding, and that kind of stuff. So after Godot 4.0, we won't keep breaking existing works because it does lead to a lot of confusion, but they're they are cleaning things up in a way that makes sense. Now, these refactorings aren't the only things going on. Actually, I mentioned earlier on, there is the new custom sky shader in Godot 4. Um, so, uh, there were two skies before, procedural sky and panoramic sky. Uh, in Godot 4, you will have a sky class that kind of holds all that stuff above, as we saw. Uh, a material, which can be a shader material, panoramic sky material, procedural sky material, or physical sky material. Um, and then you've got options with all of those. The key thing, again, being here is now you also have sky shaders. It is a shader of type, shader type sky. Um, the simplest one you can do, the only output from this kind of shader is a color. Uh, and in this case here, you can see a very, very simple one that makes it a nice shade of blue. Uh, so that is going to be a new shader type. You've got various different values being passed in, such as eye direction, position, and so on. You also have the option of doing a half res color, or quarter res color to save on uh, resources when doing it. So you can use half pass, or, sorry, uh, render mode to use half pass res, half res pass and quarter res paths. And here you can see a half um, shader being done. And you can see why you would go ahead and do that, especially if you're only using half of the actual cube there. So you can see another example sky shader being done um, and some details on how it interacts with the world, some of the performance ramifications and so on. I will link this in the linked article down below. So if you wanna learn more about the new sky shader in Godot, there is some decent technical information here as well. And then the final thing is something for all of you C Sharp people. This was just released today, this update. And we've got um, C Sharp support right now is pretty much there for all platforms with the one big exception being iOS. So right now you cannot create um, iOS applications using C Sharp in Godot 3.2. However, support is being added like uh, WebAssembly and this is one of those policies that Apple made. There's no such thing as JIT or just-in-time compiled code on Apple products. You have to ahead of time compile things and that is how this is being implemented. Funny enough, uh, Microsoft is sponsoring this work. So Microsoft just sponsored the them to get it working on an Apple product, which is amusing, but hey, we live in different times. It may be nice if Apple stepped up, but Apple never steps up, so don't expect that. So as you can see, they have their um, Dodge the Creep C-Sharp demo running on the iOS simulator. The cool thing is you're not going to have to wait for 4.0, hopefully for this one. Um, we also plan to include it in a 3.2X, possibly 3.22, which I think will be the next release. So C-Sharp support for iOS is not going to be a Go 4.0 only feature. It's actually going to become coming in uh, 322, hopefully. So as I mentioned earlier on, it can't use the JIT compiler, so it has to use ahead of time compilation. Um, 
yeah, so that's kind of it. The other cool piece of news here is in the C-sharp front, if you've done any code, um, event handling code in um, C-sharp so far, it's kind of ugly. Now in Godot, it works out just fine. So here we go, we're over in Godot, and you can see here are the various different signals that can be emitted. And you can handle those in a, kind of a roundabout way using C-sharp right now, but you're using a bit of a hacked way. Um, so it looks like this in GDScript, but in, in um, C sharp, it looks pretty ugly. So you're basically hooking up a connect event and then passing it through. You're emitting the signal over, but the thing is, there's um, events and delegates are built into the C sharp language, and that's what they've done. They've basically made it so you can declare a delegate and a signal using properties, and you can use more traditional C sharp style code uh, for handling events. And uh, it's going to make C sharp code look much more C sharp like and a lot less hacky. Uh, so that's definitely a nice feature. I don't know that that's going to come in 3.2. I don't think so. I think this is going to be part of 4. Uh, I forget specifically, but I believe it actually is dependent on some new uh, features that are coming to 4. The cool thing is there's also a future he's going to be doing a couple of announcements in his next update about. Um, Godot extensions for Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. So I look forward to that and I will cover that when it happens as well. So anyways, that is it. Those are the new features coming in Godot 4.0. Here you can see it again, this is Godot 4.0 with all of the new features, bells and whistles that are running. Uh, it does work. You'll notice if you go over to the console attached to it, there is a plethora of errors. So there are issues with this guy. You're also gonna run into some features down here scrolling through scenes and settings and so on. It is an early release. So don't even think about using this in production. However, if you do want to get in and check out the stuff that is coming soon, but you don't want to build it yourself from code. Now, the cool thing is the Godot 4.0 branch is now the Godot master branch on GitHub. So if you check out it from GitHub and build it yourself, this is the version you will get, but you don't have to build it yourself. There's also the unofficial builds, um, nightly builds being done. I'll link this down below as well. So if you want to go and check out those builds, they're built on a nightly basis, so you don't have to build it yourself. As long as the, the new feature wasn't added literally the same day, um, you should get it from the previous day's build. And this kind of saves you from having to do a lot of work yourself. So uh, if you are interested in checking out these changes, there are nightly builds being done, and I will link that as well. So that's it, that is the updates for what is coming in the Godot game engine. I gotta say again, this one is a game changer, the ability to undock windows uh, and really kind of customize your user interface how you wish. And the nice thing is this also will apply to uh, tools manufacturers. So if you're making tools inside of Godot, you've got more fine tuned control over how windows are created and you can kind of create a more elaborate system. It's definitely gonna be nice to see it that way. And then there's also that new embedded uh, system as well. Didn't cover that in this video, but and you saw it in the text and the text is linked. So if you wanna learn more, about the new refactoring name changes, the new floating windows, the new C-sharp features. I will link all of that stuff in the dialogue down below. But let me know what you think of this in general. I, I think Godot 4 is shaping up to be a very interesting release. And I do really like this multi-windowing thing. You know, even if there are limitations there, they really kind of get around some of the annoyances with working with Godot now. Working on multiple monitors with Godot is kind of annoying now. This is going to really change that. So I'm really excited about that. The new Sky stuff, the new C-sharp stuff, all that is nice as well. But the multi-window support is the big thing for me. Let me know what you think in general, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.